Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for three. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a risk. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, 420. I know that's got a lot of you fired up. Uh, super excited about today. Sorry, just posting something on the gram. Good morning, good morning, good morning. April 20th. Hope everybody's doing well. I know we're in it. Uh, the beers are growing out. The excitement is building. The anxiety is building. Uh, we are now well into this global pandemic. Um, and I hope everybody's families are healthy. Uh, and I hope you're starting to turn some of the angst and uh, curiosities and concerns into optimism, practicality, hope, um, humility. I think the show has been unbelievable and I've been very grateful for everybody who's been tuning in. So as a matter of fact, on that note, if you could just take a screenshot right now of either of the screen you're watching on a laptop or screenshot there and um, tweet it out, Facebook it out, uh, or put in your Instagram story uh, with the link to this episode right now. I'd like to bring in some new folks, some new friends into the realm. Let me say good morning to some people in the comments. Saggy Carmel, what's good? Rosa, uh, Jorez Perez, how are you? Mike Van, what's good? Julie Higgins, Yachak, great to see you. Vin, uh, Dane, Baxer, Poppy TV, Saeed, Jabbar, what's good? My man, it's great to see you. Um, always great to see you, man. I root for you heavy. Uh, Hacky Raps, Jeff Gargas, Linda, JR, Mary Robinson, Tanya, and Travis Rogers. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Um, really, really, really appreciate it. Um, Essa, Andrea, Erica, Garde, Garrett, Glenn, Ashley, Hovez, Chris Gareth, Flight Winfield. Good morning, good morning. Sindal, Lizanne. This is fun. Um, all right, let's get into the show. Dustin, just, Dustin, get in here real quick. Dustin, not Justin. What's up? <clears throat> What's up, Ibs? I think you're becoming a viral hit, and I, I'm happy for you. Uh, I'm sure you've blown up in the BMX. Thirty-five year old, look like sixteen year old. <laughs> um, are you are you starting to get some buzz, Dustin? Are you like oh. feeling it? Are you getting like some DMs? Like, give, um, me, give me a little like shoot shoot with me like I'm your friend. Like, talk to me here. Are you getting a little buzz? Are you getting a little action on social? Some DMs, some love? Yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely, but it's. I mean, mostly just people that want to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like, love they're you. Just, they're just right hooking. They're right hooking all yeah. day. Right hooker. Sorry, let's get into this show. <laughs> hey, Natalie. Dobre jutra. Dobre jutra. Kak I'm good. I'm good. good. What's cooking? Lots of gratitude for being here. Happy to have you. So I had to like write out my questions because I can't even form it. Um, I always watch your content to find the answer. I feel like I still can't get the full clarity. So Great. that's what we're here for. Here's the backstory. So I, I'm an actor, a comedian. I do stand up. I post on TikTok. I post on Instagram. I post on YouTube. Everything is incrementally progressing. Okay, sure. great. I can hear your voice being like, just fucking be patient. Just like, fuck, like, like, fuck, like, just like, be patient, love the process. <laughs> I hear it, okay, we're going in a positive direction, great, but sometimes I feel lost, like, I'll watch Chappelle do stand-up, and I'm like, if I only did stand-up, I would kill it, and then I'm like, if I only did TikTok, I'd have 10 million followers, mm. and so I know, I've heard you say before that doing things in waves is okay. Like it's okay to go hard with content and then it's okay to go hard with stand up and shut everything off. That's tough for me doing stuff in waves. Okay. I don't know if I should shut something off. And then I'm constantly trying to find the intertwine. Like I know you have pillar content so I could film everything and then divide it out. Um, it's just a lot. And so every morning I'm like, what's the most important thing I can get done today? And sometimes I'm like, and then I get hit with an audition and then I'll shut everything off, like of bones off everything. And I'll go away for like three days, memorize the lines. So, and then I want to start a product right now. So it's good. All right, let's break it down. Let me ask yeah. you an interesting question. What is, at, at, and it can change, and I'm sure it has changed as your career has evolved, but right now, what is the ultimate? The long-term goal is, 
and I don't know if it's going to become extinct, but movies, TV show, like I want to be known as the greatest character actress. Like, wow, she's like our generation's Meryl Streep. She can transform into characters. She can tell stories. So I know that's my responsibility awesome. to put that no, no, content no, no. on TikTok. I'm actually, you know, it's funny. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw some curveballs at you because I think what you're giving me is enough context to know that you know a lot of my answers. So what I'm trying to think about is back to the point of why I think this show is working is have more time to go deeper or more contextual. So a couple of things. How much time or energy do you spend on management or agents? Um, all day, every day. I mean, you mean finding representation or working with them? Both. Yeah, it's a lot of every day. And okay. I, I have an Excel spreadsheet of like producers I want to work with and like, you know, I'm working with- What about management and agents? Do you have one? Yeah. And you know, I, and like I, I, not to put them on blast, like one of the things that's been very obvious to me is, um, is the serendipity of the relationship graph. So if your goal is to be Meryl Streep or, or, or have a real true acting career, right? Mm -hmm. I, yes, I do believe a singular TikTok. I mean, look at, look at, King Bouch, right? He's like yeah. slowly and maturely, right? Absolutely. And he's, like been, he's been able to do it. He came from Vine and here he is. I turn on Netflix and he's in the movies, right? Like there he yep. is. Um, the, the couple things, where do you live? LA, I'm in New York right now, but LA, go back and forth. Got it. So one thing I would spend a ton of time on is content strategy on TikTok around the children of the power agents in Hollywood. Okay, so telling stories that... Nope, I'm going very narrow for you. Um, I would find out who the 50 biggest agents in Hollywood are, which is super okay. easy. Okay. Um, and I would literally try to find out if their sons and daughters are on social media. Like, I'm talking fucking like Kojak, Sherlock Holmes shit. Okay. And would literally tag them in my content. Tag their kids. Gary Vee is telling me to tag the executive kids and like right. TV executives. Yep. And be like, want to do a TikTok duet? Nope, tagging. You know how that works. They're just going to see it. Okay. And they're going to be like, dad, she yep. just worked. Ew. No, I don't do that. <laughs> Nelly, it's really interesting. I know it seems like, you know, no, again, like really listening to this call, like, you know a lot of things I believe in. Do I believe a single viral epic TikTok can get you there? I do. Do, okay. I, do I think that that takes a lot of output and a lot of serendipity and a lot of things? Like, I'll give you a good example. I always felt like traditional media was a good place for me to create top of the funnel brand. Right. I spent eight years saying no to everything. And then Planet of the Apps came, Apple's first original show, Gwyneth Paltrow, Will I Am, Jessica Albert, the other judges. It's a good elevation for me in my domain expertise of making investments in apps. Yeah. It's Apple. It's first show. I'm completely, I finally make the jump. I commit to that time. And then they decide to not do what they just did, which is what I thought they were going to do. They decided to distribute it through Apple Music. And four and a half people saw it. If, if I saw it. Thank you. It, if, if that got distributed through Netflix or, or Apple TV's new version or even Amazon Prime or Hulu, that would have worked for me. So I had tons of strategy. Yeah. Gave all this thought. So there's so much serendipity that goes into that game. Right. But then we control our TikTok, Instagram game. So a couple things. That I, I actually think there's two parallel paths, the two opposites. You go super high and you try to truly penetrate the awareness graph of the 50 gals and guys who run Hollywood from the agent side. Right. And then you do what you're doing, which you do well, is creative at scale across all the relevant platforms. Mm -hmm. Because those are actually the two ways people get to become who you want to become. Right, I'm like pulled in the traditional and the social world, but yeah. then and I'll have an right. Instagram video I apologize for and, and Mark Solowski saying like, this is the first time I don't like what Gary says and I totally get it. Like I understand that a lot of people are like, what? that seems off or creepy or wrong. But here's my point of view. My point of view very simply is people are on these platforms for content. You're trying to bring awareness to somebody. You can DM them. 
You can yeah. send them a nice link email on LinkedIn. You can send a letter. You can mm -hmm. send a gift basket. I genuinely believe that tagging, you know, people that are influencers of the influencer, whether that's admins, whether that's best friends, whether that's children. I, I don't, I don't, if you're making a age appropriate video and everyone's like, oh, a 14 year old, 14 year olds fucking hear more shit in yeah. school than every single adult I know every day. <laughs> people living in a naive world. And so I, I, I'm empathetic and understand um, people's point of view on that, but I'm completely convinced that building awareness towards children as, you know, or, or influencers or admins leads to opportunity. And yeah. it's not, not a negative. I just believe that to be yeah. true. I'm never somebody who's scared to reach out cold. And, you know, I have producers that follow me on Instagram. I feel a lot of pressure every time I post. I got big people following me, big execs. I mean, like, I can't name names, but top dogs. Like, so I feel a lot of pressure. And then I know I need to get my quality up. I know you talk to people about not obsessing about quality, but if I see myself as that actress, it does need to be top notch sound once in a while, not every video. Listen, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely not against it. I'm against it when people can't afford it or use it as an excuse not to make. Yeah. But I think I need to kick my game up. And I think there is the occasional iPhone video. Great. Um, I, 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 think that, I think that real talent evaluators are able to see through production value. And I yeah. would argue that the best talent evaluators in Hollywood often need the ability to be able to dream it versus seeing it. So let me give you an example. This Thursday is the NFL draft. A lot of kids are gonna get drafted who actually mm -hmm. play in small schools because the GMs dream that if they played in big uh, school, they would have been even better because they would have better weight rooms, better coaches. So I actually feel like a lot of the Hollywood types actually overlook and skip over people with high production on YouTube and TikTok because it shows them exactly who they are and they dismiss mm -hmm. it because it's still a grade below Hollywood. But when they see it in iPhone or kind of like whatever, they dream like, ooh, I see that star. I can polish that star. It's ego. Totally. People want to discover me. I mean, I have so many people. But stick with me here. Of course that. But like stick with yeah. me because I don't want you to lose this point. The reason lower quality content has value is they dream up, oh, if I put production value behind her, she can crush. It's something to keep in mind. I see I got it. I got it. And then doing stuff in waves, just like, fuck it. If you have to do stand up for two weeks, look, you that, know? I think people need to do what comes natural to them because I think they need a lot of output and hard work to actually get there. So to me, you know, if waves work, great. If you need to go hardcore in something for six months, great. If you do helter skelter every day, great. Like, I think that's, I'm, I want to give a lot of different scenarios to people so they can find their way. Got it. Awesome. Now give a shout out to your account so people can follow you. Everything is Natalie Friedman on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Friedman is spelt like fried man. I love it. Good luck, Matt. Thank you so much. Appreciate Bye -bye. you. Bye. All right. Big shout out to everybody here. Um, by the way, just to somebody say something about the IRS. I didn't, uh, Gary, what can I get the IRS? Gets their people's money. So got it. Well, people have been getting their money because the amount of stuff being bought on e-commerce last week is ludicrous as as stimulus checks have hit. And I'm so fucking angry. Fuck, man. Like literally people get their $1,200 check or more and they fucking spend it immediately. Fuck. It's almost like we, like, <laughs> I just, all my e-commerce friends are like, we're exploding this week. And I'm like, what the fuck? Literally hundreds of them. And I'm like, holy shit. People are actually taking their stimulus check and buying dumb fucking shit. Anyway, Dustin, keep going. Hey, how's it going, Gary? It's going well, William. Do you go by Bill or William or? William's great, man. Um, so just a little background on me. Um, I'm an actor as well, uh, probably best known for playing the Red Power Ranger on TV. And I actually took a lot away from the conversation you just had. I love that. I'm writing down notes like crazy. What, mo what most hit you, William? The thing you said at the end about you need to do what comes natural to you because there's so much output necessary to achieve anything. Struck, right? Yeah, it, it completely struck. Um, People create friction. Oh, I need to do it like Gary or I need to do it like William. They create friction. You know, like I'd love to be Sam Darnold. 
There's no right. throwing footballs outside that are going to get me there. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. you know, like I, people create friction and I'm trying to create, you know, fr- like just a stream of, of pass throughs because the output is the variable. Just, yeah, just completely following through. Like I, I think about that where there's there's not really any rules where people will say that they'll follow one person's content or this person's content and they'll use a certain approach. But basically my question for you was, so earlier on, life was very simple for me. I was like this economic student who dropped out to pursue acting and I got maniacal about acting and I did a whole lot in one year. Um, but then... Like I felt this thing inside where I was like, this isn't moving fast enough for me. There's so much more I can do. I have time on my hands. I've got potential. So I started an online fitness coaching business. I wrote two books and um, I just started building other things, built my YouTube, built a podcast. When I got into your content, I was like, ooh, time to get on every platform. So <laughs> I, I, I built up this podcast. I, I started um, you know, doing the pillar content strategy where I would put a lot out. And I, I got myself to a point now where um, I've always liked biting off more than I can chew, but I've got myself to a point now where it's like there are so many plates spinning every day. Do you, do you have the humility to shut things down and have perceived losses? Huh. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't feel like, like I'm at a point yet where I need to shut it down. I just don't know how to prioritize all of it yet. That's an excuse. Okay. What I mean by that is prioritization comes in the thing that needs it the most. It's like children. If you have four children, you need to prioritize the child that's most struggling at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Prioritization's easy. Humility to shut something down is hard. Then I probably lack the humility. (laughs) It makes sense. Notice how I go to something that's not so obvious, but is the fucking answer. Mm -hmm. Humility. Mm-hmm. Humility to say, you know, people people with a lot of ambition and energy, um, whether they are gabbers like me and just talk shit, like I'm gonna fucking, everything's gonna be humongous. Or if they're quiet, but they still have five to seven people that they value very much knowing what they're up to. Mm-hmm. Almost everybody right now is doing things that they don't wanna be doing because they don't have the humility to take the micro loss. Mm. Okay. I could think of a few things like that. that... Of course, you, like immediately, right? Yeah. Like this is how yeah. humans work. Like immediately say I'm talking, you're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm, fuck the podcast. Like it's taking too yeah. much time. Eight people <laughs> listening. Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. I do yeah. it all, bro. I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I, I fucking have so many, I'm working on action figures right now. I've, I've been trying to launch a beanie brand for like four years. Like, like, you know, like I take the losses. Uh, I, I micro lose all the time. Like mm-hmm. Just constantly, but most people don't have the humility. Um, and I think humility has to be one of the great emerging, if we do not, if my audience, let me just go actually very simple. If my audience doesn't quadruple down on humility post COVID, it would be a real missed opportunity because mm-hmm. I'm very passionate about it. I communicate it, I articulate well, you know, here we are where, you know, for you brother and, and, William and a lot of other people watching right now, literally, I genuinely believe in the next you know, week, people are, like a hundred people right now just decided to drop something that's gonna completely open them up. Mm-hmm. People are talking about prioritizing because they don't have the humility to drop three things. They already know. They just need the encouragement and the courage and the shield. They need this video to point to, to be like, well, Gary Vee said, and I, by the way, my great love of my life is being the shield that allows people to do things that make them happy. I want people to point to me. I want kids to point their parents to me. I want parents yeah. to point their kids to me. I want somebody who, you know, stops doing their podcast and their mom makes a snarky comment and say, see, you always fucking fail to show this video and say, fuck you, mom. You know what I mean? Like, I want that. But, well, part of the mindset for me behind it is like, and this comes from like the past with like weight training and sports and stuff like that is that, I know what that pressure does to me. You like, like it? I, I yeah, I, I like it, and I feel like having that weight on my shoulders sometimes. You, let me. So I do too. Let mm-hmm. me tell you the difference between you and I. I don't have this question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's why I'm on this show. What I mean by that though is, 
I want you to figure out if you've made the ideology within yourself that you've created an ideology that you like it or do you actually like it? It's a very important point, brother, because, yeah. because if you're asking it, if you're sitting on it, you may not like it as much as you think. I, I like it, but I don't want to drop the ball on anything. That's that's the way that I feel. I feel like I, I, I need to follow through. You have to. If you're a juggler, you drop balls. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's fucking humility. I love spinning 49 plates and watching 13 crash because it keeps me in a learning mindset and I don't give a fuck if the people who are watching me spin the plate laugh at me when I drop the plate because I look at them and ask them, don't worry about my plates. How many plates are you fucking spinning? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's humility. I'm telling you. Do you, do you ever drop the, the plate on so many things and then you just keep piling more plates on and yes. you're like, maybe I should just focus on the plates that I have spinning? Always. Yeah. I hope you're not dwelling on the plate that broke. It fucking broke. No, I, I honestly don't dwell. Like, I don't dwell at all. I, I totally hear you on that. Good. Uh, I, I just feel an obligation to the people that I work with and a lot of different things to, to pull through for them. And you, I don't want to pull You can pull through for them in different ways. Like, if you have to drop that thing, you can hire two of them on the thing that's working or help them mm -hmm. get another. Like, we're going to have to go through layoffs. I'm helping people get other jobs. Mm hmm. Okay, I got you. you I got see you. what I mean? You could, yeah. you could, you don't have to keep them paid on that plate. You can go help them be in the fork business, or they can come and help you spin the plate that's actually fucking working. Yeah, I got you. So just reallocate, move things around, and keep moving forward. Okay. And and a lot of times the person that you're letting down, you actually deep down know that they're not good enough, and don't do what I did for a long time, which is carry them out of compassion. You know what you want to do is set them up with candor and give them another opportunity somewhere else. That was a real shortcoming of mine. I carried dead weight for years, decades, because I'm a nice person, but ultimately I created a resent relationship with that individual and they weren't growing with me. So I've learned only recently in the last half decade that it is okay to let people go, especially if you're willing to help them post you. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Awesome. I, I've got I've got one little follow up question. Real fast, um, I, I'm sure that you got people that do this for you, but do you, in terms of your whole game plan, do you create like a weekly schedule or a daily schedule, or do you do you just roll with the punches? Oh, I'm I'm admined out. I have three admins, and every minute, I mean, literally, if you looked at my calendar right now, every minute of my day is I'm literally booked right now. Every minute, no gaps until nine yeah. p.m. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have okay. no. I have literally no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Google Calendar tells me every second. It's all happening in flow with infrastructure. Gotcha. And okay. that's how I'm bouncing from so many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes awesome. sense. Talk Your to you, brother. Help me out a ton. Thank you, brother. You got it, William. Take care. All right, that was some good shit. You know what, uh, team? Let's let's chop that up for LinkedIn. Let's get that into LinkedIn. Let's get that into Rogoff's hands. See how he wants to position it. But that felt very operational. Feel like there's some LinkedIn peeps that can get some real value from that. Let's keep it going. Brendan Zhang. Hey Gary, what's up, man? What's good, brother? I'm um, super, super happy to be here. Just want to say that first. Thank you. Um, so can I give you a little bit of context first, please? All right. So I discovered you about two to three years ago in high school. I've always loved your uh, energy, enthusiasm, and uh, passion, and your approach you. to everything. Thank you. Um, I found your uh, advice super easy to apply, and it was immediate help for me in my self-improvement journey awesome, uh, so obviously as you probably know like i've heard a lot from you over the past past few years and um the thing that's helped me the most and what i actually want to talk about today is creating accessibility to where i want to be via like the instagram dm and so i'm i'm a really big sports fan and um i'm super interested in like the business side of social media so over the summer i had dm'd like a lot of accounts like I'm talking like Sports Center, House of Highlights, Bleacher Report, and then you know just companies like Nike, Adidas, and Puma, and stuff like individual athletes as well. And I had DM this one company called Overtime. Yep. And have you have you heard of it? I've heard of everything. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I had I had DM this. That was so company. funny. Obviously, I haven't heard of everything, but I'm on my shit. Of course, I know what overtime is. Keep going. Okay, yeah. So I had I had DM this one company called Overtime. I really like the yep. like the uh, mission behind it, and also the creativity of their content. And you know, with all these DMs, like I can't remember when I he heard you say this, but I had a. Uh, I had like made the decision over the summer to DM everybody and I had like zero expectations with any of it. Right. I would just, you know, send it and forget about it. And, you know, fast forward four to five months, I'm literally chilling in my, my dorm. I go to the university of Minnesota, by the way, I'm literally just chilling in my dorm. You know, I like, I'm about to take a nap. Like my roommate James <laughs> can attest to this. It's like 4 PM about to take a nap. I get this random text message. Like, Hey, it's Thomas from overtime. Like you want to film this basketball game tonight? And I'm like super hesitant, but I eventually, you know, just say like, like, fuck it. Right. And then I just, cause I don't know the place at all. So like I, I was hesitant at first, but then I, I end up going to film this basketball game and like, long story short, it's like the best experience that I've ever like dreamed about. Like, I mean, I was like a big consumer of overtime's content beforehand. So like, I knew like a lot about their brand. I knew what type of videos they made. I get it. Also, I'm like, you know, a super big basketball guy. So like, you know, the high school dynamic and like the, the, you know, the top athletes that come out, like that was a super cool environment for me. I love it. And yeah. So it like, it was, it was the, um, you know, it was the, it was the best job ever. So, okay. My question is like, like I, I would say in the past, like four to five months, I've been like super successful in leveraging, um, like, you know, my position at overtime, like is truly like a blessing to be able to work there. And I've been able to leverage it. Like I've actually gotten responses, you know, from, Zaire Wade, like who's Dwayne Wade's son, and I actually like uh, Mikey Williams as well. I don't know if you I'm heard of him. About, also, like you know, I I filmed some like top athletes, and I've been able to like leverage this. Um, yep. And to like get replies from other people, and I feel like so, I Brandon. What's to... the question before my audience destroys you? Oh, sorry. Uh, no so, um, I feel like I'm on the verge of something, and I I'm just like I don't really know what to do from there. Like, well, what do you want to do? Well, like, ideally, like, eventually I want to, you know, work for, like, an NBA team or, like, I'm, like, super into, like, I'm super into, like, the sports business, like, industry, but, like, and I, I feel like I'm on the verge of something with, like, the DMs and stuff, but I, I don't really, like, know what to do from there. Just looking at my conversations with Mikey Williams, trying to figure out when I first hit him up. <laughs> January 2018. Um, you're on your way. Just keep networking. That's how you got here. I mean, my biggest question by far is what the fuck are you doing napping at 4 p.m.? Uh, it's just like, I, I just came back from like my classes at university. I don't give a fuck. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, listen, I think you keep doing what you're doing. As you're getting you know, connected with Mikey, with, you know, with Anthony, with Young, with all these kids that keep coming up, the Israeli kid, that tall, lanky kid, you're in the culture. You know exactly what's happening. Keep networking, keep bringing value, keep being patient. Try to make content for people. Keep putting out karma. Keep, you're so fucking young. You should not go in for any ask or kill. Don't, you know, all these people are trying to latch on to Bronny and Zion. I like, you know what's going on. They're all trying to get something. You don't get, you give, you give, you give, you give. I promise you, you'll be there. Because if you DM a coach, DM Eric Spolstra and be like, you were a film guy and you're now the coach. Let me fucking do film for you on on the you know 16 year olds right now or and he'll be like we're not interested in that but my draft guy is what you already did you have to do again just follow the blueprint okay yeah that makes sense also i have like i have like a secondary question so you talk about like creating value and like giving 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 is like like uh, um something that i need to keep doing right yeah and so like considering like where i'm at right now like what does like giving like really look like in terms of ask people? Okay, so asking is like you, the same as giving. You got the leverage to your point. Well, asking and then giving what people want versus giving what you perceive is the answer. You, mm -hmm. I just answered your question. Like, well, what yeah. do I give? I'm like, easy. Ask the Winston what he wants. Be like, yo, okay. I fuck with your game, coach. I love the way you you know map every. See, map. You know what you do? Map every G League head coach, and then DM them. They're, you're gonna still have the leverage of the logo that's on your fucking chest, and you're gonna say, "Yo, what can I do for you? I'm hungry." All right. Good. Talk. To awesome, you. Gary. Thank you, you so much. Take care, bro.
It's fun. That is right, SS. Give, give, give. People want to give what they want to give, which is not giving. It's 99% of the time manipulation to set up what they actually want. People want to give me shit all the time that I don't want because they want something from me. Understand? Let's keep it going. Juju. Gary Vee. What's good? What's up? So funny, yesterday I was just presenting uh, a new project that we're rolling out on Zoom call. And I present one of your videos, you know, to sell the product, telling people to become a digital mayor of their hometown. I'm like, look, Gary Vee's saying this, you gotta jump on this product because that's exactly what our product does. And we gotta be the next Zillow so stay tuned for that, Gary. I know if I present that to you, you're going to buy everything. <laughs> Can't so wait. We'll, we'll talk later. Can't wait. But, but my question to you is, um, my bestie and I, Amanda, I know she's watching this because I told her. Good, uh, we just, we just um, started our new nonprofit organization called the Hope for Tomorrow. We help children uh, in our local community in the fields of art, music and dance we want to support them and eventually we want to have a center where kids can come and be mentored not in just those fields but also um have lawyers that will be able to help them with contracts you know kids get taken advantage of all the time in the music industry in the, in the entertainment industry and we want to be able to be there for them you know gary so and uh, I've been going ham, and I understand that she had a pass uh, to pass an exam. But, uh, and I just kept taking action because I'm the type of person that if I don't take action and if I cool down, I cool down for real. You know, mm. if I sit down to watch a movie, I'm going to take a nap. So I don't sit down to watch movies. I keep going. I got to keep the momentum going. But, um, you know, from setting up the, the, um, as a nonprofit with Facebook and everything, it, this stuff is hard, but I understood. But one thing that I told her that I was doing was putting the business plan together. And she said, hey, that's my field now. That's what I'm going to school for. I have a mentor for that. You know, we can ask her for help. And I said, well, I kind of have a template that I'm going by. I would kind of like to stick to that. But then I'm the type of person that I always think a little bit more. So I started thinking like, hey, I got so much on my plate. Maybe I should let her handle this. This is her new thing. You know, maybe she'll be better. She already has a mentor. So I gave her that task. Gary, it's been four months. Uh, I'm sorry. It's been a month, four weeks. And I don't have a business plan. And I've asked, hey, what's going on with the business plan? Do you need any help? Is there anything I can do? Are you not comfortable with it? What's the business oh, plan for? I understand where you're going and, and if she's watching, like look, four weeks is wildly inappropriate to deliver something in a partnership, especially when your partner's juju with the ears and fucking high energy, like that's gonna create friction. My bigger question is, the fuck do you need a business plan for? Well, here's the thing, Gary. We need a business plan because we are going to need people to donate. I see. So in order to have people do donate, we need to be able to tell them, here's what we're doing. This is what we're that's doing. Not a, that's not a business well, plan. That's, well, a communi that's a communications plan. That's well, a that's pretty strategy. Much what we need. Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly. But, but. I even sent her the template here. This is, this is what we need, you know? You know, and, and how- Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're good, let's say she made the, you and her made the best fucking deck of all time. Yeah. You're gonna present that to high net worth people and want them to donate? Yeah, eventually. Okay. Yeah, so that's what, I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not critiquing, I'm actually trying to understand what you're trying to do. Uh -huh. You're making a, one more time, I think you're not making a business plan, I think you're making a presentation to raise capital. Uh -huh. Is that true? Well, I'm asking. That, that's included in it, you know, because within the business plan, we will also have our mission which we already have, we'll just have everything compacted in one, you know? No, I understand, no matter what word you or I use, I'm trying to understand what the purpose of it is. So you're gonna present that to whom with the hope of what? Well, number one, Gary, I want to make sure that everybody that comes into uh, the organization with us, they know exactly what our goals are. I want your, your goal. To your goal. Your goal is to build an ecosystem to help the kids in your area 
to not get screwed by Hollywood. That you could type that out. Well, not just that. We and we have that. And we have that, but we also, for example, we are going to have events. How are we going to raise capital for those events? You know, um, who are we going to partner with? People people don't invest in decks. People invest in people, Juju. What if we were to have a nonprofit and you want everybody to be on the same page and you want people to know, here's where Gary V Foundation is going to be within the next five to 10 years. I would make videos and post them and leave it at that. Gotcha. But that, that's not where we're going. Where I'm going is somewhere a little bit different, which is people value process and checking the box of certain things versus what the strategy is needed to actually make it happen. Instead of making that deck, I wish you guys had made a video interviewing all these kids on Zoom and put it out on Facebook groups in your local community because you would have built more awareness for what you're actually doing. Well, that's our plan and that's what we want to do with the, you know, with the business plan is to have all of that. So when but it's that, but that doesn't that doesn't take that definitely doesn't take four fucking weeks for your friend to make well, the plan. That's my point. Well, my, my whole question to you is how can we ask a business partner, you know, or somebody that works with you that hey, I need this. Whatever you come up with, you know, just present it to me so we can work together and really see where we are going because we need to have, like, for example, the video um, of the kids. That's something we want to do. I'm all over social media. I love video. I love interviewing people. You know, that's one of the things that we want to do. But I'm the type of person that I want to list to make sure where we're going so we can check everything off. Make a list of where we're going takes four fucking seconds, Juju. That's so, what I'm saying, Gary. So write it down. So how? how I don't, I don't, I, no, I'm, I'll be honest with you. I love you. with all, Your energy is off the charts. But I mean, like, I'm talking with love right now. Like, write down nine things on a piece of paper. Well, There's your plan. Should I, like, hey, you know, whatever, you know, that, that's my point. Like, Juju, it's nine things. I just did it. We just did it on Tea with Gary V. You need to fucking, you need to, you're trying to do this for kids in the local area. Yeah. It sounds like you need money, which is ludicrous of a strategy to start a nonprofit during this time when nobody has money. All the money's gone. Oh, the, the, the point is not to make money right now. The point not is- not about money. You, you, to, you told me you're trying to- That and get out the word out there. So of when course it's not about, about, it's not about making, it's never going to be about making money. You start a nonprofit. Right. You said to me that you needed to raise money to get this going. Right. There's no, nobody's going to give you a check. Well, I, I don't care. I'm making my own check and I'll put in my own money. That's then, not, why, then why the fuck are you spending four weeks waiting for a deck for a presentation to get money? That's my point. How do I? No, no. My point is, what are you talking about? Like in a good way. Like, like I I understand. Say that to my best friend and not hurt her feelings. Like, hey, I've been waiting for four weeks. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to be able to communicate that to her without hurting her feelings. Like, say I love you with all my heart. With all my heart. Um, are are you okay? I love you. Are you okay? It shouldn't take four weeks for you to put nine things down on a piece of paper. Let's just do it right now over a cocoa. You're, you're, I mean, you're spending, you're spending energy. In, yeah, but Juju, Juju, you're spending time and energy to make a presentation uh -huh. to get people to give you donations to have startup capital for this nonprofit. Starting a nonprofit during a global pandemic when we lost 22 million jobs in four weeks is a real stretch. Like, who are you going to? And how much money are you trying to raise? We had already started before all of this. We've been, it's been a year and it, it's a crazy story, Gary, because we had a different partner. We had a president that really wasn't doing anything. And uh, just myself and Amanda, we're doing everything. And we decided just to, you know what, let's just embrace it and let's just go in. Why so don't, why don't you, for a year. why don't you start, a, a, why don't you start a Zoom and a Google Hangouts and just invite kids in and just, ask people to come and educate them. Why don't you take the form of the mission into a digital free platform that can help lots of kids instead of like having to put it in this container of a nonprofit and a center. The YMCA worked in 1972. The fucking world's different now. I'm taking notes. Juju, people get emotional about the container that they use or the vehicle they use to create the mission. 
And I keep reminding people in business and nonprofit and politics and everything, it's not about the vehicle. Don't be romantic about the vehicle. Don't make an ideology that you're gonna have this beautiful center. The center's there to help kids. Help kids for free on the internet. Make TikToks that help kids now. I help kids for free in my fucking underwear at, at two o'clock in the morning by making content. Powerful. That's true. That's I'm, true. I'm glad that's you picked up on that. To help kids that. That's right. I'm glad you picked up on that. You you've put it, and I get it. We grew up in a you know you you start to visualize something with a purpose. Yeah. But like fuck, like 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 if the purpose is to help kids. This year that you've spent with a fucked up president and your best friend going through, she went, had to pass some tests. It sounded like, and then four weeks, like yeah. we could have fucking already impacted eight thousand kids on fucking free TikTok's fucking lives. Yeah, that's true. Get off the romance of how you're gonna do it, and get on the romance of what you're trying to accomplish. That's true. The vehicle doesn't matter, you know. No, it doesn't. And the vehicle you're trying to do right now is expensive during a time where that's not practical. That's very true. Good, Juju. Yeah. Good luck. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. That ended well. I'm excited about that. Whew. Getting in it. You know what's amazing about this show is because I have more time, I can go deeper. I'm not cutting it off, you know, before we get to it. That conclusion, though, helped Juju and her friend about a nonprofit because they don't need to fucking build a center to accomplish what they want. I know there's a ton of parallels right now to a lot of people in businesses and parenting, you know. <laughs> One parent was like, I just want my kid to be happy by torturing them to be on the lacrosse team and go to Yale? What are you, a fucking asshole? Like, come on, let's get smarter. Focus on the goal, not your ideology of the vehicle to get to the goal. Let's go. Kevin. Hey, Gary. How are you? How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well, thanks. That uh, prior comment is a great lead in. Uh, I got a parenting question here for you. Please, please. Uh, I have a 16 year old. I've got four kids, and um, actually, actually I have two dogs too. So don't be surprised <laughs> if you hear some barking in the background. No worries. Um, I've got a 16 year old son. He's my oldest. He is, by all accounts, you know, the traditional student. Uh, does really well in school. Straight A's. Does great at standardized tests. You know, all that sort of stuff. Um, if this were 20, 25 years ago, when probably you and I were kids, we'd be saying doctor, lawyer, you know, All that. going yep. right for it. Yep. Um, <clears throat> my fear as a parent is that he will always be a good student and he'll be good at whatever he does, but he won't necessarily love what he does. How do you, how should I help him through that, right? Like he's, First of all, I love you. Like, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if this is going to come through. I think it is actually. Yep. I love you. I love you, Kevin. I, no, really, I mean it. I just showed my goosebumps. Look, they're really coming in. Like, I really, really love you because he, your kids are very lucky to have you. That is an incredibly profound and very, like, just noble question. I, you know, I think it's about education, like anything else. Yeah. I think just like the reverse of, like, me trying to push my buddy who, like, thinks his son needs to go to play lacrosse and this and that, like, because lacrosse yeah. will get him to Yale as if Yale means anything. Any, like, his kid's not happy. Right. I know it. The kid's DMing me. So um, I think I think what you want to do is a lot of kids like that have figured out a system. They figured out the school system and they feel safe, which is why they're going to then take a job that's safe, but they're not going to be passionate or on fire. So you need to have that communication. You know, really genuinely treat him like an adult and say, look, this is a potential. Not, son, I think this is exactly what's going to happen to you, but this is a potential thing that might happen to you. And is this where you're at? Like, like do you, what do you love? Or you observe them and you pay attention to things they do like outside of school. Does he show any interests outside of school? Did we lose Kev? Or Nick? Excuse me. Dustin, I think we lost him. Let's get him back. Let's go to the next one and get him back. Great question. Gary, what's going on, brother? What's good, bro? Hey, uh, quick question, uh, quick backstory, I guess. I've been following you for about five years uh, since the Fuck Monday video was going on sorry. Facebook. Yes, that went um, crazy. Oh, my God, man. Uh, it's seared into my head. Uh, but quick 30-second story. I uh, went to college, first first generation immigrant back in 92 from Iraq. Family came here. So watched the entire family just work, 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 work. Yeah. Start from um, the bottom. 
Oh my god! And was it was it a classic immigrant story where your parents and grandparents or family members had these kind of jobs in the old country, but here they had to fucking eat dirt? Dude, it was it was literally uh, ninety two. They came in. My uh, parents, uncle, grandparents worked in Greece for two years. Got the paperwork. Came to U.S. Lived in my great uncle's home and just similar to my story. Wow. Dude, yeah, so a uh, lot of stores, you know, corner stores, restaurants, all the way up to ownership. And, and what did uh, your dad do in Iraq back in uh, the 80s and 90s? They were just working in the restaurants. Um, mm. Him and my mom, they had me at 21, and they had like 45 days to decide to join the Army or flee the country. So <laughs> they're like, we're gone. Um, Go ahead, bro. What can I answer but, for you? Yeah, so the question is, man, I've, I've watched the grind and – um, I'm, I'm running my own business now, uh, e-commerce dropshipping business and a digital marketing agency. Yep. Agency is literally based on all the models that you've shown on LinkedIn <laughs> and Instagram. So if you're watching, everything you do say does work. Um, but the question I have right now is my two business partners, they're mentors to me. They're both in their 50s. I'm only 28. And they tell me this all the time. Uh, Lazar, you got to um, you gotta stop being a yes man or you got to stop saying things that you know people want to hear. Um, and I'm not, I mean, I'm in the trenches every day. I'm working, I'm grinding. Uh, I don't know if it's whether spe- my background. Be, spe- be specific to me on that. I, man, I, I feel like I'm hurt. I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I, I always put other people's, not opinions, but their feelings, I guess, a, above mine, right? I, so, I, I, I do too. Yeah, and I, I feel like it affects me in a negative way, maybe not immediately, but maybe down the road or the relationship becomes. Or, or the reverse, potentially. I guess so, yeah. Let's play it out. Well, give me a yeah. real like because I like where you're going here, Lazar, and I think we can help you and a lot of people. So I'm interested in this. Give me a black and white, go real with me, get a little naked. Give me a okay. real life example of the whole fucking give me the whole okay. story. All right, man, here you go. Here's the, I'll, I'll put give it all one. up. Uh, one of my clients is a, a luxury dealership in uh, Michigan here, okay. uh, auto dealership. And it started off, we were just running Facebook dynamic ads for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it started really working and then he started, you know, the GM, the owner started asking, Hey, what else can you do? Can you do a little more? Can you do a little more? And it was kind of just give, give, give. And Hey, it was my first big client and starting the business. So you were doing doing more things for the same scope or were you asking for more money? Yes. I, I I wasn't asking for more money. Okay. Uh, Whenever I did, it was kind of brushed off. Okay. Um, and it's gotten to the point where I feel like it's, I'm more of an employee rather than. Uh, you know, the marketing arm for them or their agency, yep. Yep. which I feel like I did that to myself though. You did, but that's okay. Yeah. I don't think that's bad. Let me ask you the other questions. You become very valuable to them. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, I can I could sense that for sure. I can too, without knowing yeah. shit. So let's keep talking. Do you have other clients? Yeah, so well, we have uh, two other Real dealerships. Quick, what, yeah. what percentage of your overall business do they control? Uh, my partners or nope. No, my, the, oh. this client. This client fee in your overall business. Do some quick math. Oh man, that's the thing. It's it's huge. I'd say how much? Probably fifty percent of our revenue that's coming okay. in. So yeah. you need to spend every waking hour continuing to eat shit and bring them value, and every minute of your life landing other clients. Every minute. Okay. Now, how, you, how do we ask for referrals with them? You're, like I, you don't. Don't no. don't put them in a box. We're gonna put okay. them on a shelf. Okay. They're over here. No yep. resentment. I'm, okay. They've been fifty percent of your revenue. Yeah. Like you've subconsciously, strategically over delivered mm-hmm. because that's giving you stickiness. R- absolutely. I love what you're doing. Okay. The only part of this story that I don't like so far is I want you to make them eight percent or twelve percent of your revenue. Right. So I want you to slowly not fear mm-hmm. them going away and kind okay. of like take a little of the energy mm-hmm. and a lot of energy away from your leisure, your weekends, your other time. Yep. With a 100% strategy to make them much smaller of a percentage of your business. Mm-hmm. And once they become 20% of your business, I want you to go back to them and say, the gig is up and I need to ask for a 25 to 50%, 100% increase. Okay. And if not, we're going to have to part ways. What kind of contract do you have with them? Uh, it's it was a six month contract, mm-hmm. and we after the six months we just pushed it month to month. So it's <laughs> even, it is, even better, even okay, better. Good, I, good, good. Yeah, 
even better. People see that as like you got fucked. I see that as you've won. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> I want you to make it 20%. You need me? Oh, you love the advice, mom? Thanks, mom. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I, how do you think I got here. All that cheerleading. I feel you, man. You need to make it 20% of your business and then you go in and now you have the leverage and now they get scared that you actually walk and then you have the, the ability to walk. Awesome. And then at that moment, when they represent 18% of your business, that's when you have to walk. Okay. Okay. Got now it? that the yes man, is, like, do I, do I just, should I just continue doing what I'm doing then? Like, yeah, I don't understand. I don't. It's understand. just my personality, I guess. I don't, I don't understand know, the yes man. I think you, you know, I think you're, I think they're demonizing a strategic. I think you did everything right except amortize out their leverage. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you, when you're in the service business, you are mm -hmm. in the yes business. Right. Right, and that's why I think I got to where I'm at. I say yes to all my clients all the time. Yeah. Until I don't. But you have to have the leverage to not. Absolutely. One last quick, one yeah. last quick question, Gary. How do I get unlocked out of Facebook, man? I was creating an ad last night, midnight. Literally finished the entire ad, put in my payment, and then I got locked out of Facebook. It's Why? asking for, dude. I don't know. It's asking for my ID. I uploaded it. I'm, I've checked all these Reddit send forums. Me an email, send me an email to Gary at VaynerMedia. I'll get my media team to help you. Oh, you're the man. I appreciate right. it, brother. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Talk to you, man. Bye. All right, let's keep going. Keep it going. Kevin's back. So, Kev, what yeah, I'm saying sorry. is, no problem, brother. A, it's by treating him like an adult and saying, look, this may happen. What's his name? Uh, Brady. Brady, listen, literally sit down, co you know, coffee, driving, however you guys roll. Brady, listen, something on my mind. You know, I'm so proud of you and you're fucking crushing it. But one thing that has run through my mind, Brady, and I want you to feel comfortable in having this talk with me is, I'm, I am I'm potentially, because you're a young man and a lot of things are gonna evolve, but potentially, right. you, I find that you being so good at this that you figured out a system and it's safe that I wanna make sure that you're happy, not just financially successful. And I, right. I hope you know that there, you know, there's other ways to go about it than just going to a safe job that pays yep. it. And then just seeing what Brady does. The other thing in parallel is, are there other things that Brady's interested in yeah, I mean, he's a, he's despite the fact that he does well in school, he's a normal teenager, right? I mean, he Great. plays Call of Duty. He loves Love sports. It. He's a three three sport athlete. So you really, know, you know, oh. telling telling him that you you know talk to Gary V today, the owner of the Minnesota Rocker Call of Duty team. Do you like want to work for that team one day, or do you want to be an esports player? Like, it's you creating enormous conversation yeah. around a hey, don't just. And it's not like don't make, if you make it not Brady, I'm worried you're gonna mail it in. It comes so easy to you and you're gonna live. That's more like dad wants me to be ambitious. If you right. put it in the position of like, hey, I want you to be happy. And right. you might find yourself at 41 realizing you went safe the whole time and you may have resent or unhappiness. I care about your happiness, not how successful you are. Where kids get right. fucked and where parents get fucked is all the conversation is around how successful, AKA financially they are. Yeah or status, not right. happy. And I think you're aiming down a happy path and I think if you keep pounding the happy path and play scenario play, like, hey Brady, would, would you rather be uh, you know, a lawyer making 630,000 a year or a Call of Duty marketing executive and making 129? And just having those talks with him, I right. think you need to navigate yeah. those combos. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. I think that's exactly what we've started to do with him. And what have you seen? So since you, you know, started a little bit, is he just classic closed he, off and like, whatever, dad? Or is he kind of like leaning in? Like, what's happening? No, his struggle is, is that he, he, he likes to learn and he is good at certain, like, for the example, the other day he said to me, he's like, you know, I'm thinking about being an engineer because I'm pretty good at math and I should probably do something with that. And I'm like, Ugh, you know, maybe not, no, no, you know, let's find something that you're no, no, passionate play, about and let's play, go for that. Play with me on this. Say... Brady, that's cool. You could also, you know, you could also day trade stocks. Brady, you could also run mass analytics for the government around defense spec. Like, like what you want to do in that sense is not let him just pick one option with it. You need to almost educate yourself on what math infrastructure is on everything. Or Brady, you could be the CFO of Activision. 
you know, kind of going into his world? Or why don't you be the CFO of the Knicks? Or, you know, like what's his favorite sports team? Sorry, say it again. What's his favorite sports team? That wasn't me. He he just I think he lost connection. Okay, let's Gone. go to the next one and we'll bring him back. It'll be a three part series. <laughs> the greatest stat ever. Yeah. What's good? Hey, how you doing today? I'm really well. How are you, Scott? Uh I'm I'm all right. Um my my question is I turned forty nine on Saturday. Happy birthday, bro. Thanks. Where do you find your passion or, or your why? How do you do that? I I'm a factory worker and I've always thought all my life I've tried different aspects to find something that gave me a reason to get out of bed excited or even want to get out of bed. I understand. How do you do that? Where where let's, do you let's play. Let's play. Okay. Let's go, let's go into the mindset of the following. What, what do you tend to like to do when you're not working? Uh, the last few years, sleep. Right, because you're depressed. Yeah, you no, know, I get it, because you're depressed and you're, you're like not in that great place, but that's okay. Well, because, I don't want to use this in a, uh, as an excuse. I've it's been, not an excuse. I, I deal with clinical depression. I've been, for 15 years, tried to find different med medications and nothing's worked. So basically, sure. my medication for my depression is watching videos like yours and other motivational and speakers. And, and this... And does that work, for, that, that, that entertains you, that makes you feel like you're living vicariously through it? You feel like that one video might get you going, you're looking for it, like what, how does that right. work for you? Well, yeah. it just kind of gives me that, okay, there's something better out there. There's, well, you know, there's something. Well, there is. I'm missing. Got, you know what's cool, and it's not about you missing. Couple things, you're gonna really like this answer, brother. The first thing I need you to do with all my heart is realize how much you have an entire another life to live. You need to know that. You've been like from the day you were born to today is the amount of time minimally you're probably like in the ballpark of what you're going to live. Why, why I think that's important is that Scott, you and I grew up in a generation where like, remember when we were 16, 17, like 49, 44 seemed like a thousand. Right, right. But now, but now that we're here, it's like, wait a minute, like it's not that thousand like there's still some real life to go so i think first and foremost you have to realize how much is in front of you and it actually doesn't matter the last 15 years what happened from 34 back it, it actually doesn't and what i mean by that is and why i'm so excited we're here together brother i really am i'm really genuinely passionately optimistic about this moment is i think we're going to spend a few minutes here and like chip away and i i, I understand i talk to a lot of people um theoretically in in different scenarios that may be similar maybe because everyone's got different nuances stick with me here so let's okay. take away a couple let's take away the last couple of years let's take away the motivational videos in general whether it's sports or music or food or is give me a history lesson of Scotty O like of things that you've kind of liked wrestling boxing like anything ah uh, you know I, I've tried to find that answer myself. And, you know, I I used to love to camp and stuff like that. You know, when I was younger, I was in the military. I was pretty physically active. I was always on a go. I was not one that just sit. I couldn't sit. I was yeah. always on a go. In the last 10, 15 years, there's been nothing. I, you know, nothing. I have nothing that I can find that just gets me that wants, you know, makes me want to pick up and go. Talk to me about and, your inner circle, positive or negative? Uh, I don't have much of an inner circle. Yep. Uh, in fact, you know, just uh, for for example, I had four happy birthday wishes. One was my wife, one was my ex-wife, and then my stepson and my son, and in that order. And, you know, that was about it. So, you know, I don't – I used to have more of a circle. I enjoy being around people. I generally just – I don't – I'm not a people person anymore. I understand because you know when when it when inside it's not a good thing it's hard to like make the outside work. Right. I totally have empathy for that. Let me ask you another question. Scott. Do you have um do you have uh any social media accounts? Just a Facebook account. And are you active on that? That's usually where I get my video content. Do you comment? 
Uh, occasionally, not a lot. Um, Positive or more razzing? Well, I don't. I usually don't comment unless someone is like attacking someone for something, and then it, then it kind of aggravates me, and then I jump in. I love that you defend people. Yeah, I well, I that's that. something I, that that's one thing that I've always done. I've always liked to help people and stand up for the little guy. That's that's just that. my thing. Me too. I like that. I like that. I like the little Robin Hood or like the bully Buster. Well, sometimes it has to be done. I agree, my man. I, I'm just so genuinely happy you're on here with me. Um, what what? Uh, here's a good one. What in my content, um, has resonated with you, if anything? Or you know, I I think the here. biggest thing is you just seem to um. You don't. You're not judgmental. I mean, you're straightforward. I like that. I I like the fact that you don't sugarcoat nothing. You know, I, I myself, if you've got something to say to me, I just want the truth. You know, I, I don't be easy with me, but don't be gentle. But I, I think that you genuinely are trying to help people and you're not necessarily trying to do it to benefit yourself. Yeah. You know, hey, thank you. You clearly have good emotional intelligence. You're right. <laughs> and like, and, and I just like, like I'm in the, like you should, I wish everybody could feel my chemicals right now in this moment because I'm so happy and I'm so conscious because I genuinely believe that through words, amazing things can happen. Like, you know, first of all, I think it's, you know, I think it's nice to have four family and ex, you know, ex wife, you know, like, son in law, like, like four is better than zero. Right, you know, like, right. I really mean that. There's just an ungodly amount. I'm just very grateful too. I appreciate you saying I'm not judgmental. That meant a lot to me. It was a very good observation because you also followed it up with being candorous and trying to shoot it because Scott, I'll be honest with you, man. Like life is so fun. You know what this makes me think a lot about? Momentum. I think a lot about momentum. I think about it all the time. You know, I love sports. So like basketball's super funny. You know, I don't know if you've ever watched it or you follow it, but like, you know, one team can go on a 13-0 run, then there's a timeout. You kind of gather yourself. Then that team can go on a big run, the other right. team. And I think life is about momentum. And I think I think a lot about fear too. I, you know, I was very fear-based in a lot of things as a kid, like swimming, riding bikes, kissing a girl. They were scary to me. And I was late. I was a late bloomer across the board on all three of those things. And then and then you do it and it becomes normalized. And like reason, like one of the things I'm running through my look, you know, I'm talking to you the, on the corner of my eye right over here there's a stream of like 10,000 people that like want to be your friend. You can't see it. It's on my, it's in the live oh, streams. Okay. I've got a stream that shows me Julian and Lizette and MB and Oded and Scarlett all on YouTube, Facebook and, and Twitter all like, I love this guy. I want to be Scott's friend. I root for this guy. I, I want to be Scott's friend. And so I sit here and I'm like, man, this connect, like this is just a good old fashioned game of like positive energy momentum like in the same, you were 34 when this kicked in, like you said, for the last 15 years, right? Right, yeah. I gotta tell you, I'm comp and I mean this, Scott, I am completely convinced with my entire soul that this is the moment that it can just start in the other direction. That That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that one thing that just gives me that let's go. So Scott, are you willing to share your email so all these people who are into hiking and outdoorsmen and maybe hunting or fishing like like that's that ex like one I'm playing here we're playing and you can say no to anything you know I go into okay he's giving me some context that he used to like that I wonder where do you live uh Indiana Rensselaer Indiana um you know like are you know to me back to like I was scared to kiss a girl but then you do it like to me it's like would what's going through my mind to be transparent is like would Scott go on a hunting trip with, or like fishing trip with like a stranger that he then met on Facebook, got a little more comfortable, did a FaceTime because they email him right now and he does it. And that becomes the trigger to something he's liked at a new social graph. How does that resonate in your head? Well, you know, um, fishing, I've, I've always found very boring. I, <laughs> respect, you know. respect. I'm not sure. And <laughs> And and I, I I don't look down on people that hunt. You know, it's it doesn't bother me. I'm not a hunter myself. I just Understood. you know I can't kill animals. You know, Understood. in fact, Understood. I generally like animals more than I do people because they're makes sense. Not judgmental. They're, souls. they're not judgmental. Exactly. I know. Yeah, you know, I, I don't have a problem with meeting new people. I'm just 
I don't want to say that I am uh, afraid to meet new people. I just, I, I just don't know the words to use about people right now. Yeah, I guess, I guess I've just been let down so many times by people, and it's like I've isolated so myself. Scott, Scott, you can't be let down when you don't have expectations. Let's play with that for a minute. Okay. One, so I've been let down on paper an ungodly amount of times because of the way I do business, similar to the kid earlier where I give, give, give. Right. And a lot of times it doesn't get reciprocated. However, I take on full accountability on my giving. And I think, it's, I think that this is an important insight. I think that one thing to think about, back to the next 49 years, is if you don't have expectations to what you're giving, truly, I mean this, and it's not so easy. Like, I'm, I'm not shooting it like, but, but one of the things that's really worked for me is the ability to calibrate expectations. I have too much empathy and sympathy and compassion for other human beings to expect them to put me in front of themselves. Right, And in a weird way, that realization allows me to put other people in front of my own self and has created a very charismatic, kind, good energy that is sustainable for me because I'm not disappointed or judgmental. Right. And so, you know, for example, what's really weird about this meta moment, Scott, again, back to tens of thousands of people watching this, is if you, if you allow me to have you share your email and if you actually go on FaceTimes and Zooms and email and talk on Facebook Messenger with these hundreds of people that are set up to talk to you, you should see what's going on here. People are like in love with you. You know, don't forget the context of you meeting them is you being this transparent about, you know, you know that worry or things of that nature. I am blown away by how many people are golden hearted, but I think it takes two to tango. You also have to work on yourself on expectations. I, I, I completely agree with that. Thank you, you for know, saying that. I, um, it, it's just, you need positive people in your life. I get that. And I'm so scared that you, you meet someone, you think maybe they're positive and... Then they get you. Yeah. I get it. You I know, get it. And they drag you further down negatively. And that is I get definitely that. something I get that. that I, I think if you go into this next chapter, maybe with this Vayner Nation community, which is, people don't like me, you know, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of people follow me at first because they think I can help them make more money, but like, people that are watching right now, 85% of them have a level of humanity and kindness that I think is elevated from the norm of content on the internet. And so I have so much confidence in this community that, um, you know, I'm sure, like, I just feel, I feel like really excited. This, I'll be very transparent with you, Scott. We've been doing this for a couple of weeks now, maybe a month, or it feels like, who knows. But there isn't even a close second to my favorite call of this. And we've had some barn burners on here. Because um, I'm completely convinced, as my chemicals bounce in my body, that something incredible is going to happen here. I, I hope so. And I, you know, I, I didn't get, send my question so I could talk to you about finances. I mean, granted, I would, I would love to be a bit better financially, but that's not what I need. That's not important I, to me. I'm Money aware. has never been that super important to me. Me neither, even though I have the talent to produce it. I, I trust me, good news. I know that's not why, that's not why you're here. I, on the flip side, think there's no room that you could have been in better than this one for what you actually do need. And I okay. think, I, I think this community and I think why you've been attracted to me is um, is just all playing out. I, you know, Scott, I think about this all the time. People talk about, you know, COVID and Corona being such a terrible event and that's absolutely true. We've seen right. death tolls that make us all shiver down our spines. I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that I'm incapable of not seeing the silver lining and the optimism in this. There is no chance in hell that you and I have these 20 minutes any way ever without COVID. It's just not right. how I was navigating my life. Even when I did Ask Gary Vee or a podcast, I would be in such a tight, short window that I would have to cut it off, cut it short. The level of depth I'm able to do on this show is so different. I, I genuinely believe in my soul right now that your life will never be the same after this. I genuinely believe that. And, and, I, and I think that, that that's amazing as a collateral 
as an impact for what happened in the macro. And that makes me happy. And that's how I think about the world. Right. And, and like I said, you know, I'm not scared to meet new people and move forward. I'm, I'm just nervous. I think two things have to happen. One, you have to do two very important things. Number one, okay. we're going to share your email here and you have to do two things for me. One, okay. you have to work on yourself to not have expectations. You have to be okay with Lizette or Johnny or Stevie or Jude or Matthew or Genstick to be okay with like worrying about themselves too. You know what I mean? Okay. You have to be okay with that. You have to be selfless in their selfishness. At the same token, you also have to be very awake to knowing that the people that are about to reach out in this community are already starting on third and a half base around kindness, compassion, because they've also gotten a lot of context out of you in this call. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, I'm ready. I mean... Let's do it. What's your email? Uh, Lone Rider 71 <laughs> <laughs> Scott, Scott, you know what my number one, number one uh, passion in life right now is from a year from now for you to send me an email and say, yo, I changed my email from Lone Rider to Scott's Gang at gmail.com. Uh, that could you couldn't have, that was literally out of central casting. I love you with all my heart right now for that <laughs> fucking email. <laughs> well, it, I, I, I don't know. I just, it, it spits I get me it. right now. You know what's funny? It is the perfect segue for this call. It is going to be the last time that email is going to really mean anything because I think that email is going to start the process of that email changing over time. So go ahead. Okay. Let's put it up. Lone Rider. 71 at gmail.com. Dustin, do your thing. Let's make sure it's right. Let's make sure. Yep, that's it. Scott, listen to me. If you work on yourself around not expecting anything from all these incredible people that are emailing you right now. And everybody who's emailing, listen, Scott's gonna have to make some decisions here. Let's be empathetic. You can't just be like, hey, I wanna be your friend. You need to write where you live, what kind of interests you have. You know, do you wanna, you know, what's your Facebook so you can go on Messenger? Like, or are you, are you what do you do? Like, are you in paintballing? Are you in gardening? You need to pitch our friend here, Scott, because this friendship is valuable. And so he's going to pick some here. Scott, I'm really excited about this. Well, I, I appreciate you taking the time. I really do. It, it, it means more to me than you probably will ever know. You know what's funny? I hear that at different times. I really do know. Like, people need people. You know, and back, oh, to, yeah. your, and back to your point of like, well, I haven't been able to do that because you haven't been in the best place. I'm so grateful. And, and I'd be frank with you, Scott. Also, back to chemicals and how this all works. There's probably a, uh, in that 80% gratitude, there's 20% guilt. I'm aware that I could have had a DNA trait that acted different. This is not just like, hey, pick it up. I mean, these, are, these are diseases and sickness. This is real life. Right. So, it, so I have so much good. I want to put this energy. I'm, Scott, I'm telling you right now to your beautiful face, which I love your fucking goatee, by the way. I'm telling Thanks. you right now, brother, you're about to shit your pants. This is going to be good. You probably... Actually, can you check your Gmail right now? Just give me an update on uh, the emails you got. Yeah, and By I the can. way, everybody, I hope you've been paying attention. Make sure you wish him a happy birthday. He's going to go from four to 4,000. I just want to get a sense of how many emails you've got. Uh, oh, shit. They're still coming in. Look at the top. Uh, Does it say at the top? Well, it says 12 so far, but I haven't checked my email in a couple of days. But yeah, I got like five more just in the last three seconds. Um, <laughs> You're going to have a very, 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 very busy and exciting day. I think so, yeah. And I think it's going to change your life. Uh, once again, I just thank you. You're welcome. All right. I wish you well. Take care of yourself. All right, thank you. Get back to all those emails today, Scott. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Keep it going. <laughs> Third time's a charm, Gary. It always is, brother. Yeah, um, I literally uh, drove to my friend's office because I think, uh, like I said, I got four kids and they're jamming the Wi-Fi in the school it. right now. They're jamming it. School. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. Um, 
I think we're I think we're there, Kev. You know, I think I think I think what you want to do is paint him pictures that don't make mm-hmm. his world narrow. So right. he's like, so maybe I'll be a developer, and then you could say, well, maybe you'll be the CFO of the of the Pacers. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, right? Like, I think you need to really push him into dreaming opportunities where he's like he's being practical around a skill set. Yep. But that skill set of math translates in a million different ways. Yeah, exactly. And can layer to things that he finds more fun, which will then give him energy, which will then drive him to levels of success and happiness that are far greater than just taking a practical route. Right. I mean, here's a different way to maybe ask it. It's like, how do you manage a kid and manage in the right word? But, you know, Shepard will call it a kid who is frankly, perfectly designed, at least by all accounts, to play the game that is education right now, right? By He's, not overfearing it, because you and I share our ideology of like what the school system is, by right. not overfearing it, right? and by transposing that skill into things that make him happy. Okay. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, I think it makes sense. I think it just... The we have to be careful. Path. We have to be careful to not over demonize school. Right. The way right. that we grew up, where it was put on a pedestal. Like you, yeah. how old are you, my friend? Forty-five. Right. So we're the same age. I'm forty-four. I turned forty-five this year. You know what I'm about to say? There was no fucking other option. Tell these kids that are watching. There was no entrepreneurship. Right. Right. It was go to college. Right. And if you don't go to a good college, there's a very big chance you won't be happy and successful. Right. Right. The whole million dollar more number that they threw around all the time. So now, now we're in a great spot, but I, uh, we need to be careful to not over demonize it either. Right. And I, I think you need to tap into his interests. I love the three sports Call of Duty stuff. Like, love it. Like, yeah. And, and really also throw some things at him. Do some weird shit once in a while. Like, you know, take him to a cooking class and be like, I know mm. this blows and I know you hate me, but like, let's just talk sports the whole time for the two hours and maybe, God forbid, you're actually destined to be the greatest chef of all time. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, just push. Just mix it up. Push. Yeah. Yeah, like, and, and by the way, like, push and then let go. Maybe, like, it's real life. Like, never get too caught. Always be well, willing to adjust. You book the cooking class, it's 200 bucks each, and then he just fucking, like, just is devastated. And then you're like, fuck it, fuck the 400 bucks, and you let him out of it. That doesn't right. mean that he's not seeing it through. That means you took a shot at an innovation and it didn't work. That kind of stuff. Do you see where I'm right. going? Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, we're, we're big on that as parents. I mean, back to the Call of Duty thing, it was or any video games when he was younger, it was always, you know, let him play the video games because he's doing everything else fine academically. And if we just kept pushing the academics, pushing the academics, he doesn't know anything other than academics. So let him go with it. Let him, you know. Now it's the 3.0 version of that. Now have more intellectual, theoretical conversations with him to expand his mind. Yeah, no, I like that. Okay. Talk to you soon, brother. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Bye-bye. Good effort there. Drove to a fucking another place. I, mean, I respect that. Heighten, what's good? Mike Z, what's good? Tool Crate, what's good? B Adventures, what's good? Andrew Pezza, what's good? Kim Jacobs, what's good? Oh, we haven't done a wine text thing. Let's put it up. We haven't done an all in challenge thing. We're going to end with all in challenge today again. Dust, got that cued? Uh, yeah, I still have it. Um, awesome. I wasn't sure if we were going to 11 or not. I think we might. Okay. I think we might. Just checking. Just yet. Um, Winetext.com. Uh, it is, uh, thank you. Green juice. Um, Winetext.com. If you buy wine on the internet or you buy wine at Total Wine or Bevmo or if you buy wine and you're not signed up for this, you are breaking my dad's heart. Um, you're breaking my heart. Oh, I, check this out. I was making some commercials, we're making some ads commercials, some ads sold, ads for social media, they're gonna like this. Hey dad, what do you think about So I'm making some ads for, uh, so I'm making some ads for, for social. Check this out, this is gonna hit your Facebook and Instagram stream. Tell me what you think. Those other wine sites that people buy from. They suck. They should sign up for winetext.com. It will win the lottery. 
Sign up for Wine Tech. Oh, next part. X.com. Because all the other services suck. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Hey. Please, 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 please sign up for winetext.com. It would mean the world to me. If you're like literally $60 wine for 30 bucks, $40 wine for 14 bucks, it is literally the best, best, best wine service in the world. It's easy. It takes two minutes to sign up. It takes two seconds to order. It's super fun. It's only 365 deals. It's the, it's the best. It's the fucking best. So um, please, uh, please. And if you don't drink, if you, go to, if you go to your Facebook account right now and say anybody who drinks wine, sign up for wine text. Um, that would mean the world to me as well. Let's watch it one more time because everybody loved it. <laughs> it's really good. Wine. Hold your uh, mic closer to the phone. Yeah. That way. What do you think about all those other wine sites that people buy from? They suck. They should sign up for winetech.com. It will mean a lot to me. Sign up for winetech.com. Because watch this, watch this. Look what my dad's suck. doing. <laughs> Make my dad happy. Like when my dad gets signed up, like literally people signing up for wine text. And by the way, don't sign up for it just to make my dad happy because um, if you don't buy anything, it costs money to send a text. So we don't need that. But if you try, if you drink wine, it would mean the world to me. All right, let's keep it going. And let me this know if you it. signed up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Woo! Hey, how Hi. are you? I'm well. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm doing well as so, well. Um, do you have tea? I'm doing tea. Let's do it, Katie. Can we do cheers. a cheers right there? Cheers. I love it. I love it, man. So first off, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on the show. But for more importantly, you're changing lives, man. And I'm trying. No, you are. You just change people's lives in a way that I think is absolutely fantastic. And if I'm being real with you, what I feel like my purpose on this earth is to connect deeply with people and inspire them to live a more meaningful life. And so much of that has been influenced by your teaching, has been influenced by others, and is really just, I look up to you as someone, I want to do what you're doing. Um, you. Yeah, of course. So do you, have the, do you have the patience to pull it off? Because the thing that- Absolutely. The thing that you'll need to do is do things that build up the credibility for the messaging yeah. to land. Absolutely. I absolutely believe in that. And it's not something, it's not a tomorrow thing. It's something that I'm doing for the rest of my life. If this is what I'm going to be doing and maybe I make it when I'm 80 years old and I make a difference in someone's life, that's what I'm here for. And that's what I'm going to be going for it. I'm proud. So my question, thank you. My question today is I've been struggling to kind of find a path that aligns with that vision. So I'm a high school senior. I'm about to graduate. And I'm trying to Talk really to focus. Real quick. How did everybody feel about, like, what's the t vibe? How many kids do you have in your graduating class? Um, we have about 600, huge. maybe a little more. Oh, yeah, huge. yeah. Where, where do you Hillsborough. live? Hillsborough, New Jersey. You live in Hillsborough, New Jersey? Yeah, why? You know that I went to North Hunterdon High School? No way, bro, that's sick. Wait that's a minute, so Hillsborough cool. High has 600 fucking kids graduating from their I high think school? so, yeah. Yeah. We are packed. We do not have room for it, but we have them. Do they still have like a football trophy for Ricky Prohl, the wide receiver who went to Hillsborough? I don't know. All right. I, don't know. No, I wish I could tell you, but Fair enough. I couldn't. Katie, do you know that we're like 20 minutes apart right this minute? I'm in Hunter County, that's, New Jersey right that's now. That's literally insane. That's okay. So what, what's the vibe? Was everybody like devastated about prom and graduation? Was Absolutely. Absolutely. Sad? People are just devastated about it and it's do they totally have good, do they have, go ahead i'm sorry no, no no it's totally good it's just totally changed not only our senior year but our outlook for what we're doing next year which mm -hmm. is totally so like for me this kind of gets into my question so um i've been kind of my focus has been one optimizing for a great experience after high school and really just connecting with people who are going to push me towards the path that i'm supposed to take and for me those two options have kind of narrowed down to either taking a gap year or going straight to the college that I'm accepted to. And which but, is that? Uh, UVM, University of Vermont. Yep. So I'm kind of in between these two circumstances, but coronavirus has really added this uh, extra level of frustration because my gap year and my freshman experience could look totally freaking different. That's good. So 
Let's flip yeah. that. No frustration. Yeah. No, no, no. Well, if you're going to do what you want to do and your energy is so awesome and everyone's loving you in the comments, <laughs> you, you, need, you need to understand that plans are shit. It's oh, good absolutely. to have a plan, but, it, but the ability to adjust to reality is the ultimate. And well, let me tell you this. So Please. what I've been doing, um, I actually had a conversation with one of my mentors who works at Ted. So it's my dream to work at Ted, um, Ted talks, you know, all of that. Yes, one I'm of my there. big dreams to work there. Um, so I'm totally passionate about their vision and really aligned with their mission. I so think I'm, I, I don't know if she's still the CEO, but I, I might be able to, you need to email me at Gary at VaynerMedia. Yeah. I, I still know the president. I don't know if Absolutely. she still holds the job, but she clearly knows a lot of people there and I might be able yeah. to help you. So don't Absolutely. forget. Absolutely, that'd be fantastic. I will, I will not forget. Okay. But I was talking to one of my mentors who actually works at TED and we are basically, everything in my life, I try and look through the lens of everything for me, not against me. So what of I try course. and do is to, if something happens, Corona, okay, how can we make this but work? But then Katie, I, then I need you to stay true to that and not say frustrated yeah. about the gap year fucking Vermont thing. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I, I have know. to continue let's, that. Let's yeah. sit here. Like I'm okay. being serious with you because I see the potential in you. Yeah, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Your energy is just sweet and fucking awesome. <laughs> thank you. But then you need and to listen to me right now. Yeah. Like fuck that frustration. Don't get caught up yeah. in the bubble of what you're supposed to feel. You're not frustrated. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm excited about it. I can feel yeah. it. This yeah. is an important part of the evolution. This is the training. We're on some Jedi shit now. Yeah, yeah. I actually don't believe that you're frustrated. No, I'm not. I'm excited about it. But you're parroting words from others. You're taking the energy from the ones that are. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's why we need to focus on this moment because this is a good okay. moment for you. Let's and do you. it. Let's do it. No more, parrot, no more parroting other energy. No, Speak absolutely. your fucking truth. So you're going to be in a gap year your whole fucking you. life, Katie. Yeah, no, I was looking at that. That's definitely what You know what, what I mean? I was... Like gap year, meaning doing what yeah. the fuck you want. Absolutely. And I'm still trying to figure out what exactly that looks like. Right now I have a personal development don't, Instagram page. Don't, 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 uh, I'll let you finish in a minute, but don't, yeah, no worries. don't put it into process. You already know exactly what it looks like. You just told yeah. me what you're going to do. My, I always knew I was going to do it too. You know what my yeah. process looked like? I worked in my dad's liquor store for 15 years. Absolutely. And I'm, do, I'm you think, do you think that was the like clear that. path to fucking, <laughs> like to impacting people's lives, carrying fucking cases of Corbell Brute into people's fucking, <laughs> you know, you know, back seats? No. Yeah. If you're into patience, then you're not overvaluing process up front. Yeah, absolutely. No, and to fall in love with that process is something that I've been definitely holding core to who I'm trying to become. Katie, do you, Katie, and get you know what I'm basically that. telling you? What? It's not going to matter. What I yeah. mean by that is it doesn't matter if you go to Vermont or if you go to a gap year, if you're an intern at TED or if you work at a coffee shop in Aspen or if you go in a car with your friends and drive cross country or if you go to Ireland yeah. for three years. If it's your destiny, if it's what you're about, you will absolutely process through. And so whether you have an Instagram account that has 43 followers on it or not, whether you go viral yeah. on TikTok or not, whether you, you execute on the thing that happens 19 years from now that's invented for, by somebody, you, we haven't even started and you need to stay on the macro mission and not overvalue the micro mission. Yeah, The answer absolutely. is actually it's just not gonna matter. Yeah, no, and I totally agree with that. I think that was something I was, as I was preparing for this show, I kind of, I got to that in a way of saying, you know what, I have this purpose and really, I think people look for the perfect place to live out their mission. And really, you can do your purpose, you can do your mission literally wherever you're going. And that's we're, really we're, important we're, where I want to do. Doing, we're doing it right now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm super excited about it. Thank you. You're welcome. So, what, how do you, paint me a picture, and it will change 39 times, so no pressure. Paint me a absolutely. picture of exactly what you're doing when you're 44. Go. Exactly what I'm doing when I'm 44? Yeah. Hot take. Just a random. Right. I want to be traveling and meeting people, helping people, going to, hopefully I will amass a large amount of knowledge and skills that can help people and add value to their lives. And, and I want to be that, proud of you see that? that. And, and how Ooh. Hello? Cool. Wow. Uh, Gary, you dropped off for a second. I did? Yeah. <laughs> Am I back? Yeah, you're back. Okay, cool. Okay, bye. Um, hey. <laughs> hey, sorry. Are you, 
so you have this incredible framework of selflessness. Thank you, thank which, you. You're welcome, which I also have. Do you, what is selfish to you? Do you want statues? Do you want to be famous? No. Do you want money? No. no, no, all of these are okay. Do not demonize them. What, I know. what do you think you want and or need? So I know selfish. that money. Don't give me, yeah. don't give me some altruistic selfless thing. I got it, man. I, I want to help you. Go ahead. All right. So I know that I need enough money to live the life of my dreams. So what that means is having experiences that I think are freaking amazing and that energize me that I think are vibrant. That like, are is awesome. that, like, is that going to like some weird mountain in Peru and like drinking Hell yeah. the tea, the Hell tea yeah. of like some rare fruit out it's of the doing asshole all of, it, of like some man. weird animal? Like you're into that foof shit? It's doing all of it. It's, doing, it. it's experiencing life to the absolute like highest no, no. degree. But how do you define that? Is it in the form of foof? Like I'm a foofy guy, but I don't need to go to some mountain and hang with some gurus in silence and drink like bee, <laughs> bee urine. But some people love that shit. Like are you about the yeah. bee urine or or not? Like you love that um, weird shit? Like India in a cave for a month like and mud on your, like are you into that foof shit? I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit in the middle. I think I, okay. I love some of that. I think Pushing my boundaries of what's comfortable, I think is freaking awesome. So doing some of that is awesome. Um, but I also want to be able to um, be financially free Good. and not have to really stress so, on so that. So do you point. want pe- do you want people to pay you as their coach? Um, I'm not sure. I okay. if that's, that's the way that answer. I if that's the way that I make my money and that's what gives me the financial freedom I need, then absolutely, I think that's does great. It, but does- does it run through your mind of starting a sentence like life is good and building like a $5 million a year hoodie company? Does that run through your mind ever? Are you that kind of person? Um, that definitely does. I've definitely okay. thought about it. Okay. Um, like Cause I'm definitely into like, I've even getting back to this idea of optimizing the experience of what can we do with coronavirus? I had this idea to basically how can we recreate the freshman experience in a virtual space where you're only kind of creative constraint is the fact that everything has to be online. So again, it's creating those random collisions, it's creating those deep connections, those deep conversations with new people. So I've definitely had thoughts like that um, of creating something, a program, a business, something like that. I love it. Katie, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that I hope you rewatch over and over. Yeah. You're 100% going to win life. Thank you. I'm Thank positive. You. I'm positive. Yeah. Thank you. I'm positive. Keep it simple. Keep it okay. open. I like your framework. I like your energy. Yeah. How many well, pe- how many people follow you on Instagram? Not a lot. I have maybe 83. 83 followers. Not for long. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And I do have a question. Okay. <laughs> and you're feel free to say no. No problem. Um, but I'm well, here I'm, and ooh, I want to be You follow cool. five people. That fires me up. You know that's my number. Yeah. You absolutely. literally follow five people. By the way, you follow five people. Yeah. NASA, yeah. Manifested Minds, TED Education, National Geographic, and me. Yep. It's cool. Thank you, man. You, so I do you have a watch question. Watch this, Katie. Up yeah? To, uh, you've already doubled. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm listening. So I'm definitely going to continue doing this mission. Um, but I got to say... I have this moment to be bold, so I'm going to be it. Okay. You talk about finding a leader who's doing what you want to be doing and working them for free. Yeah. You also said to find someone and say, what can I do for you? I'm hungry. Yeah. So Gary V, what can I do for you? I'm hungry. All right. Can you create? Because we're going to be hiring. Absolutely. On my team. Like, are you a writer? You know my content. Well? I am a writer. Yeah, I do. All right. Send me an email. I'm, I would tell you right now that you have a significant chance of being able to get a job with me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But you know what, Katie, you might not want that job because right now you're, (laughs) you're already up to 278. I feel like you're going to be at a thousand before this video is (laughs) over. Katie, send me an email. I'm going to introduce you to Ted and I'm going to introduce you to Andy Kay who runs my team. And we're going to vet your creative talents because right now on Team Gary, we're only hiring makers, people that can make me make content for LinkedIn, for Facebook. Either you have to design, make videos or write. Um, Yeah. So, uh, I'm into it. Absolutely. In That'd the title, be it's Gary of VaynerMedia. Put Katie from Tea Time and New Jersey. Plus Dustin will get connected with you. Actually work with Dustin. Dustin, you can take care of that, right? Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Get lost. I got you. Katie, Katie, look. 353, Katie. 
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Keep going. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Thank okay. you so much. Bye bye. It's a good episode. Cam. <sighs> Hi, Gary. Oh, man. This is insane. This Where are you is from? Insane. Where are you from, Cam? I am. Thank you for everything. First start, I'm always grateful for, for everything you do and bringing that value. You saved my life numerous times. Thank and you. I couldn't be more than grateful for that. Seriously, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Where so, are you from? I am originally from Peru, born and raised. Oh, my God. I um, just said fucking Yeah, Peru. I know. How the fuck? <laughs> this is yeah. what... Uh, see, Cam, this, this is, is what... Insane. Out of all the fucking things, when I'm painting the weird picture to Katie, I say yeah. Peru out of any fucking place on earth, and then you're not fucking not. Yeah, fucking. This is the fucking foo foo shit that fucks with me, Cam. Straight up, man. This fucks with Straight me, Cam. Up, man. This fucking fucks with me. It's it's all connected because you know, Fuck. I, man, I, it's so deep, man. It's so deep. So just like with you, you know, you're an immigrant. I was an immigrant for years. Matter of fact, when I came, when I first came here, I had to go back because my dad, you know, he was doing crazy things. So when I came back, my mom remarried and I was still working on my paperwork, getting my green card, finally was able to do that. So fast forwarding, school was not for me, but I was still an A and B uh, student, but I ended up dropping out because of we lost Cam. Um, I'm still here. Okay, I'm good. still here. You ended up dropping out because of. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm here. I'm with you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. I can hear you. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I can't really hear you though. No, we lost that part. Uh, Cam, try Dust just reloading the page and coming back. Oh, in. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. Good. Okay. You, wait. So, wait. Can you um, can you hear Dustin, Dustin you, but not me? You know. I don't think um, she can hear me. Yeah. Out, Cam. Cam. Um, can you actually just reload the page and then come back in? Sure. Yeah. yeah, I can hear, I can hear, okay. You could hear me, but you probably can't yeah. hear Gary. Cam, can you hear me? Okay, okay, I'll reload the page. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, I guess I'll just stay here for a second. <laughs> well, thank you, Dustin, for keeping me entertained while I- know I you like to see somebody, so. Dustin, the foo-foo stuff, like, is, that was fucking crazy. Were you, did you know Cam was from Peru? No, she actually mentioned it in the comments, and I was like, I'm pretty sure we're in a simulation. <laughs> <laughs> well you are dude you're fucking 35 and you look 3.5 and i still can't get over that shit cam all right we're can you back. hear me we're back we're back okay. yeah, I can hear go you ahead very so go ahead thank you Dustin. thank you um anyway dropping out oh uh, i went to colorado lived everywhere long story short the I got into I got into the media business, right? And I was doing uh, promoting for music festivals, uh, traveling and doing things like that. But my mom, it's just my mom here living. Now she divorced. There's a lot of things going on. And just like you helped your dad build this incredible business, I feel the same way. You know, as all my family's in Peru, all of them, and me. I feel like there's all this responsibility on my shoulders to create the the wealth necessary and i'm not i mean i, I love the financial industry because that's where i'm it. at you know and and i got into that at first i was like you know what is this gonna work out i'm all about marketing but i fell in love with it and you know now just wanting to create that wealth for my family building a legacy and wanting to obviously go back to peru helping out children there helping out you know children here in our community as well Can my I, question then, is then, go ahead i want to hear it yeah my question is being pretty much the person who is leading the way of my of not just you know with my legacy that I want to create for my family I know that it took a long time for you to build that business for your dad and right now obviously you know my family's broke you know my family's broke and I'm over here thinking all right I'm in this new business uh with the Cam, agency Cam you're gonna lose yeah. if you want to go fast that's my question I know that I almost interrupted you I already had the answer the answer is slow and that goes countercultural because every day that goes by is another day that you envision them struggling. Exactly. But Cam, I'm gonna throw a real bomb at you that you as an immigrant know and a lot of other people here who've come from immigrant or humble beginnings. They're not struggling as much as you think. Yeah. Because when your context is your life and your life is your context, you don't even, you now know what you want them to have here in America, but they haven't tasted that yet. 
So you're creating an ideology of pressure, like I've gotta get my grandma, my mom, my aunt, blah, 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 over here so they can have it good in America. But they're not struggling as much as you create in your mind because that's their reality. I wasn't struggling when I had way less, I was happy. Yeah. And yeah. if you try to go fast, you're gonna cut corners and actually lose. That that's how I feel about the situation. I'm new to the to You the have to re instance. you have to reframe the situation. If your perspective is that you have to go fast for them instead of you have to go slow to ever pull it off and that these next 3 years they'll still be super fine because that's where they're from. That's what they know. Yeah. That's, do, you, that's, do you understand? This is where immigrants in America always get caught. But Gary, I gotta get my family here. I'm like, how bad is it? Are they like in jail? Are they in a dangerous zone? Are they in a war zone, a drug zone? And nine out of 10 times, they're not. They're like, yeah, but they're running water. I'm like, but they've always known the running water wasn't great. Yeah, but they, you know, I want them to have new clothes. I'm like, but they've lived in the same clothes forever. Like, we can't impose a capitalistic, wealthiest country on wor- in the world on them because they're content. Of course they'd love to be here more because they just miss you. Not because they want to eat a fucking Shake Shack. Yeah. No, exactly. I know. You know I miss them. I haven't seen them in 13 years. You, you need to go back and see them. You need to worry about going slow and sa- flipping some shit on eBay to save for a plane ticket. Not to fucking win the lottery. You're going for the Hail Mary. Exactly, exactly. Don't. You could have seen them twice if you had the perspective I'm trying to have you have. This isn't about you fucking bringing them over and having a mansion that everybody lives in. That's, a, that's, a, that's your ego talking. No, you're absolutely right, you know? And, and of course, I'm obviously going to work hard. And, and, I believe and- it. You know, obviously giving my all, develop every single day so that I can become that person that I ought to become. And just like you said, I listen to everything that you mentioned, the humility, the patience, the strategy. And, you know, I definitely got to be patient, you know, because right now I'm in the business and everybody's going super fast. You know, they're messaging, they're DMing people two, three hundred messages. And I'm over here thinking, I don't want to I don't want to be a spam, but at the same time, I don't know, like, how to how to go about it, you know? How to go by, about the by brand. Make, by making content. Yeah. I made content for so long before anybody came. Hmm. But you also can do side stuff. You can save money, you can find money. You know, that's why I love camp, why I love the flipping stuff. If you got that in you, like that's the quickest way to make $3,000 is Goodwill and garage sales. Yeah. You know? And immigrants, have, and immigrants have the humility to go and drive and pick up shit. Exactly, exactly. And right now, you know, I, I actually did that. Matter of fact, I did flip a lot of things on OfferUp, LetGo. I tried to it, it went pretty well. I, I did sell some stuff. Um, and I like that concept of going out and, you know, picking up random things and then flipping it for more. Um, I'm telling you right now, every year you can go to Peru. Every year you can go to Peru if you garage sale every weekend for a couple hours and ship out some stuff on the week. I'm telling you right now, you can. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm going to do that. No, seriously, because I have to go back to Peru and see my family. You, you know? have like, to. It has to happen You have year. to. You're, you've got, you want to go back when you've already did something. Like, you're trying to be a hero. Just be a family member. I know, and that's that's the thing, you know, like every now and then my mom is struggling, so she asks us, you know, for money, and I'm obviously gonna have it, but my story, my backside of story, I went homeless for almost two years, and you know, I'm still decorating my apartment, I'm still trying to, you know, obviously build myself up and build my, my, my you know, my blueprint. And so I got into the business of insurance and finances, and I love it. You know, I'm learning more about money and things like that. Now I'm not like, oh, you know, I have to, the, like money is life, happiness is not. It's about the process, you know, what you're doing for families too. Um, but that leads to, this, to the question as well. Like everybody's going super fast. You know, everybody's building up a, a big team and I'm over here doing my thing, you know, creating content, branding myself, 
you know, obviously providing as much value as possible. But I don't know if that's a good strategy to be DMing two, two, three hundred people a day. What? Here's the good news. Why don't you DM a hundred people a day, offer some value, do it a little less spammy, and see what it feels like. When you don't know the answer, you have to do. What most people do in life is when they don't know the answer, they debate it in their own head and do nothing. They look at other people who've done it and do whatever they said without contextualizing how it impacts them. I don't want anybody to do anything I say other than live their life fully themselves the way I do and at least hear out the tactics that I put out that might bring value and see if it brings value, not debate if it does or blindly believe that it does. So the answer to your question on that is try it for a week and see what it feels like. And if you feel spammy and gooky and ugly, then stop. Yeah. You know how many of my friends don't like, I like to eat exotic food. I grew up in the wine business, so French cuisine like foie gras and sweetbreads and all sorts of weird oysters. I'm a very exotic eater. And a lot of my, when I'm out, a lot of my friends or business associates are like, oh, I don't like oysters. And do you know that more than half of them have never had one? <laughs> really? And that's how I think about this. You don't know what it feels like to DM 200 people a day. So you have to taste it. Mm -hmm. Try it. And give value to them, right? All the value, see, I... I so it's, with the it's, not, it's not the tactic, it's how you feel the tactic. Exactly. Because I'm over here, you know, learning about money too. And I'm like, okay, obviously financial literacy is ve you know, very important. Um, and there's other things that come with it, like the leadership, you know, the the build, you know, building up somebody and, and things like that. Because I'm doing that myself. And I see a lot of people my age who struggle, people who went through the same course of life. And I'm like, okay, like, this is what I did. You know, this is how I got out of that situation, how I went from homeless to having a lease at home um, and, and little things like that. So when I'm creating the content to help people, you know, with the financial literacy, I know it's boring. You know, I know it may be boring. But you're not boring. But yeah. You got it, Cam. I trust you. Get home I know, though. man. I'm going to I'm a get it Cam, done. Cam, get to Peru. For sure. No, I got to get there. I Cam, do. Cam, number one. Because you'll regret it when people aren't there anymore when you go in six years. You need to go immediately. Yeah, this year. Definitely, Look, man. you have to be practical. I don't know what your money situation is. You're going to have to figure it out, but I'm telling you right now, flip life, I'm telling you right now, flip life is real. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Just about being patient. I'll continue listening to your content, man. Thanks, I Kim. love everything you do. And, you know, being able to donate an all-in challenge, like that's something that I, that I look forward to do someday. You know, being able to help all these children and people in Hungary. Like, I grew up in that. I was... Like in Peru, poor for a third, third world country, you know? Like I know that. I get it. And I'm very passionate about this. So, but overall, I just, I'm very grateful for this moment. Thank, Thank you, you for giving me some value. Absolutely, you got it, Gary. Take, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Talk on to you that, soon. On that, if you don't know what the All In Challenge is right now, allinchallenge.com, uh, in a little bit, I'm gonna show you the video. My offer is crazy. The Ultimate Gary V Experience. It's a raffle, $10 tickets to enter. I fly you to three of my keynotes. You sit front row, sit in the green room with me. Um, I spend a week with you at VaynerMedia and work on your content with my Team Gary Will and I'll, I'll jump into a bunch of stuff. You go garage sailing with me, you go to a Jets game with me and tailgate and sit with me. I won't talk to you during the game because that's how I roll. Um, hmm. $25,000 shopping spree at Wine Library. Um, get to be on my podcast. Uh, it's going to be pretty legit. So uh, check out allinchallenge.com. Scorsese and Leo are letting you be in their movie. Um, Justin Bieber will come to your home and serenade you. Um, there's just some real shit. So allinchallenge.com, please check it out. Uh, we've raised, Jesus, $13 million in a week. Launched a week ago, or actually not even six days ago, $13.4 million uh, have been raised. Uh, and we're very proud of it. Very proud. I'm sure you've seen it all over. Um, celebrities, athletes, just been unbelievably, unbelievably incredible. Let's sneak another one in. Hey, Gary, what's up, man? What's up, Uncle Pudge? How you doing, man? How's, uh, how's quarantine life? It's going well. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm a big lemonade out of lemons kind of guy, and so that's where we're at. 
hundred percent. Yeah. Um, this, uh, this whole thing has really helped me have some good quality time with my family that, uh, we haven't ever gotten before. So I'm super pumped about it. Fire away. So I want to start, um, by just, um, I, there's there's not a long enough live stream that we could do to tell you how grateful I am uh, for for everything that you've put out. I've been following you since uh, August 23rd, 2018, and I have I've literally consumed everything you've ever put out, um, unless it um, requires me to do reading. Because like you, <laughs> I don't read things. Um, I've I've read all of your books that are on audio book. Um, and I want to give you a little bit of context on, on who I am before I, I go into my questions. So I'm a, a 31 year old stay at home stepdad. And um, on the side, I've got this dream to uh, create uh, a communications machine um, similar to what you're doing with Sasha Group and, and Vayner Media. So um, that's my dream to be able to help uh, small businesses and organizations and nonprofits and, and different things like that, help them to communicate with uh, their audience and, and their communities and build that community. So uh, which leads me into both my questions, um, the first of which is a lot more practical. Um, and then the second is something that I think um, I, I've struggled with the word that I need to use today with this the, with this question. Um, I, I need your wisdom okay. on. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So, my first question is: I am a part of the creative story team uh, for my church, and I see a lot of churches struggle with, with communication, with uh, digital content, with building communities online, especially, and, you know, and, and definitely in smaller towns. All day. Yep. Yeah. Very, very archaic models. Right. And, and I think a lot of that has to do with fear um, and, and a lack of understanding for sure. Always. And leadership just being stuck in old ways. Right. A hundred percent. I totally agree. Um, and and one model that I follow is uh, Brady Shearer with Pro Church Tools, uh, who actually uses a lot of your um, logic uh, when he talks to to churches and and helps them to communicate in what he calls the 167. So there's 168 hours in a week. We spend one of that in church, and churches struggle with the communication in those 167 hours in between. Makes sense. Makes sense. So, so that's what um, my goal is in being on that creative story team is uh, helping churches understand the concept of um, functioning as a business and organization um, without letting go of the, the anchor that they have, which is their message. I totally understand. So what can I do there um, to help? By, by making content by yourself around video games or other, like uh, looking at your setup, appreciate the uh, mug life and the empathy. Yeah, setup. you know, but every time I go garage sailing, that's the shirt so, I wear. So when I see, when I see the, the N64 games in the background, mm -hmm. I think if you make content for you, okay, and then show its success to the church, mm. and you're like, this is what works. Because if you try to do it through the church, you're gonna bang your head against the wall, you're gonna get nothing accomplished. You're in the system. Mm -hmm. This is how I think about education. The education system is, um, is rigid. Education is the most important thing in the world. How you right. do education can be done different. We've been doing some real fucking education here for two hours this morning. A hundred percent. So I think you need to prove it through you and then put it on a silver platter for for everybody at the church to look at and say, what I really want to do is do it for the 167. See, this is why I, 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 I never text in questions to you because I always know what your answer is going to be because you've already answered the question in every That's bit of strategy. content you've ever created. What the uh, strategy... Go ahead. ...is to put out all my best advice for free and then use the serendipity of non-scalable moments like this to drive it home, to use the energy exchange right now to be like, fuck it, I'm going to, you know, you know the answer. Sometimes yeah. it's literally this to be like, 
Yep. And, and yeah, so you're, you're hundred percent right. So that's why I always struggle with in sending in questions to you. Um, but I totally agree with that. So, and so why aren't you doing it? That's leading me into the second part. Okay. I am. I love it. But I struggle. Mm-hmm. So, um, uh, and I'll, I'll preface my question with this. So at the beginning of this year, I started doing um, what I call the 366 challenge, where I decided to uh, create a piece of content every single day. And uh, it started with, uh, video content. I was making videos every single day. I got a camera for Christmas. Uh, I got a mic set up that I'm doing my podcast with. So, you know, it's relatively, it's high quality. Um, but it's not the tool brother. You're right. You're hundred percent right. Uh, so yes, um, the feed's coming in really weird. So just give me one second. No worries. I wonder if it's, I don't know who <laughs> the answer is always garage. <laughs> <laughs> That's art, right. Art Mac. It's just us for some reason. Are we good? Talk to us, Dust. Test, test, test. Seven four nine. I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, all right. Oh, you guys, everyone's. You guys are coming in like really robotic to me. Got it. Okay, no worries. How about for everybody else? What's going on in the comments? Looks good on his end. Hey, everybody, Stream can you let good us know? Looks end. good oh, okay. here. Looks good here. Sounds fine. Yeah, I think it's you, Dust. Yeah. Prop, you know what? That porn plug-in that you have on your computer sometimes uh, right, drains right, right. a lot of energy. So right. I would, I would, I would, I would take that out. It's a work computer. You, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, but you put. Uh, I've seen what you do on your work stuff. So it's that. You know, you may want to take that plug-in out. Okay. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so. So I started this one, this 366 challenge uh, at the beginning of the year where, where I decided to create a piece of content every single day, uh, focusing on video in the beginning um, to, first of all, work on myself. Um, and it, it became this, this journey into myself um, where it was this transparent, uh, journal almost that I was posting on social media, uh, writing down my deepest innermost fears and thoughts. And it became a journey into myself. But at the same time, what I wanted it to do was, uh, help build, uh, a portfolio and credibility and context around what I want to do with my business. So, so what's the problem? This, this I, I I don't have confidence in myself. Well, let's so get confidence in yourself. The the second part of this is my my real struggle. After about thirty year or twenty or thirty days of it, I started to think too much. Of course, and because you weren't getting enough views, because you you got some a negative comment. Because no, I never got any negative comments. Every piece of feedback that I ever got was totally positive. People in my church were coming not up a, to me. Not a, not People enough, in public were coming up to yep. me. Not enough. Um, not, not enough. Not enough views for your. You LSD? know, I've taken. Um, I, I I really try to do my best to take your advice and not even look at that. I, I know I try not to even look at is the it, likes. Is, I don't look at the views. Is it, is it your overall framework? Like, did you grow up in an environment? It's me. You're... Yes. Well, well, I grew up no. with a, uh, I, I grew up sexually abused. I grew up um, physically and mentally and um, verbally <sighs> abused yep. in my home. Yep. Uh, I, I moved to Mississippi when I was t- 11 and brand new school in sixth grade, got beat up every single day from sixth grade to ninth grade. Yep. And I got big enough to where people <laughs> stopped messing with me. <laughs> Thank God. Um, which I know you can relate with because except I didn't get big enough. I didn't get big yeah, enough. I just I, 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 got, I, got, I got charismatic <laughs> enough and smart enough and clever That's enough. Right. To, you know. Yeah, you got big enough here. Exactly. Um, but here is where I, I also I also for transparency really didn't have that issue mm-hmm. because I had a personality trait that was so confident and so likable that it didn't make me vulnerable to your point when you're insecure you and you're broken. It's a hundred percent. Your home all, life. All, all I'm tr- brother, all I'm trying to do for the world is what my mom did for me. It's not super complicated. Absolutely. And that's what I'm trying to do for my kids because I, I, I grew up in a toxic environment. Um, and you know, I'm trying to do that for my son no, who bro, has his own bro, YouTube you're, you're, channel. You're playing it right. You're 
if, if you've consumed that much of my content and you need to continue to pump complete and utter positivity into your soul to outbalance the negativity and it's not one for one. That kind of level of abuse as a child, that's like a thousand to every one minute I, I can put into you or anything else that's positive and practical, self-esteem building and believing. But brother, you're on your way. Like, like when I sit here and I've been through a lot of these rodeos, you're very on your way. And I, I need that, Gary. I, well, I need I just gave somebody that doesn't, that's not connected to me, that doesn't love I, me. I, I unfortunately <laughs> love you, so you're gonna have to take that with a grain of salt. But, but I definitely am not connected yet to you, but now we are. And the reality is, I just am good at this, and I just think you're on your way. And if you have to rewatch this clip, clip this 14 seconds, and play it on repeat every day, and make. So I, I, I wonder if mm, a, a lot of my mental hurdle is the fact that I don't have enough um, portfolio or, or credibility because nope. it's, nope, that's not it's it. not it, things it, that I've ever it, done before. No, and, it's, it's your own insecurity um, manifesting. It's just um, it's it's your own man. It's just it's just your framework. It's just where you came from. And yeah. good news, you fought because you had it in you to get out of it. And you're yeah. on your way. You're on a, you're on your real way. Yeah. And now it's you're just early in the process. What do right. you say? You're and that's definitely what? one thing that I try 31? to keep top of my you mind said? is is to understand that every single day I repeat to myself, 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. Love I've been doing this and for a way, year and a half. By the way, by the way, and when you get there, you're gonna say 10 years again. Right. At 34, I was like 10 years, 10 years. Now I'm 44 and guess what I'm saying? I'm gonna fucking kill at 54. 54 yeah. is gonna be fucking crazy. Yeah. Bro, you're on your way. You're on your way. But you're, Gary, you're and I, I, I'm, I'm excited uh, to, to be connected with you. Um, and I, I know you just um, had a conversation uh, with Katie. Uh, and <laughs> look, I hate, I hate being the, the follow-up person. Uh, to do something like this, but you know, you talk about a lot. Um, if there's something that you want to do to get cl as close as you can to the sun yep. of that, um, to to feed off of that energy, I'll, I'll, I'll save you time. If you want to apply to Andy for my team, I'm never against it. It's a real filter. You know, I'm always comfortable saying no. It's a, it's, you know, uh, it's a super coveted job. It's, it's so it's competitive. Um, but it, it doesn't scare me to give you that opportunity. You're just gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to get through the filter of some pretty hardcore subjective opinions on, based on the merit of the work that we can see to make that decision. You also have to move to the New York City area in an entry level capacity financially, it's just the reality of the job at the starting point there, just like anything else. And so mm -hmm. if those things match up, I'm not against it. Hundred percent. How do I? What do, what do you want me to do? Dustin will take care of you. Got you. I was right, brother. I'm three minutes late for my you, next Gary. meeting. I love you back, Dustin. Get out here. Thank you so much for being on the ones and twos. Um, thank you everybody who's watching today. I thought today was remarkably strong. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I hope Team Gary V is watching. I think there's a lot of Instagram clips, and most of all. It would mean the world to me if you went and bid on the Gary V Experience ten dollar raffle ticket. Uh, you can buy tw you can buy twenty of them for a hundred bucks, so five bucks a pop. Uh, please check it out. And here is the full experience. I will see you tomorrow. Is tomorrow ten a.m.? Um, I thought it was nine still, but tomorrow is uh, ten a.m. Oh. Because one of us is sharp, and the other is not. Nope, I'm not sure. <laughs> Check this. I am giving away the ultimate Gary V experience. How should that go? Okay. Over the last week or so, I've been uh, jamming with my friend Michael Rubin and helping out on this All In Challenge that I am accepting right now. But allinchallenge.com, please go there. We are challenging some of the greatest artists, entertainers, athletes in the world to provide a ridiculous all-time experience or one of their most iconic items in their collection to help raise money to help feed the hungry during this ridiculous time. And so now I have to put up my auction. So my auction, the ultimate Gary Vee experience. Here we go, I'm gonna go off the top of the head. And you can go on all, uh, allinchallenge.com to go bid on this. I am giving away, okay. You get to, in the course of a year, you will go garage sailing with me and film uh, Trash Talk. Also, you're gonna get a workout with me and Mike Vacanti. So I know a lot of you pay attention to that part of my world. Also, we're gonna go to Wine Library and do a $25,000 uh, shopping spree. That's right, 
I'm gonna pay my dad. <laughs> well, I'm gonna donate. We're gonna pay my dad twenty five thousand. So twenty five thousand dollars shopping spree at Wine Library. I will walk through the whole store with you, tell you the war stories, and you'll buy a bunch of uh wine, beer, liquor, whatever you want, food. We are going to go to a Jets game together. You're gonna tailgate with me. I never do this. When I give away Jets tickets, I never let the person sit with me. So you will sit with me during the Jets game. I won't talk to you during the game. I'm completely focused, but you'll get that. So the ultimate Jets experience, tailgate, full game with me as well. Also, I'm going to give you one week play at Vayner Media. So this is for you and a plus one, by the way. So the two tickets, the for, we'll do some plus ones, we'll do some just me and you, depending on what it is. One full week at VaynerMedia, getting consulting and business advice from Team Gary V and me for the entire week, hanging out in the pit where the show's done. Uh, you're gonna be a guest of my podcast. We're going to do a wine dinner for you and seven of your friends uh, at Hunt and Fish Club uh, in New York City. And I'm gonna fly you, uh, all paid, plus one, to three of my keynotes and we'll work on those details. The ultimate Gary V experience. I hope you bid on it. I hope you get involved. I hope we raise a lot of money to help people that need it. Also, what's so fun about the All In Challenge is you get to challenge people to be in it. I am gonna challenge all the Vayner Sports athletes. I expect you in there, so that is number one. Number two, I'm gonna go with, ooh, you know what? Timbaland, the super producer who's completely lighting up uh, Instagram. Timbaland, the super producer, I'm calling you out. And finally, I got one. The Undertaker, one of the great wrestlers of all time. Please join the challenge. Everybody go to allinchallenge.com. Please support this. The experiences are gonna be nuts. We've been working, bleeding out of the eyeballs for the last week, putting this all together. You're gonna be blown away what you're about to see on social media. Hashtag All In Challenge. Please check it out and please go to your favorite celebrities, athletes, and entertainers and leave hashtag All In Challenge to get them involved. The All In Challenge, please. Take it.